All right, so this lecture will be a brief introduction to CMake. CMake stands for uh, cross-platform make, and it's the modern version of uh, older auto con auto config um, or auto tools configure. Um, this is a way that you can take um, a large project that has, say, um, possibly many source code files in C or C++ or any other language and compile them together uh, systematically to create libraries and executables in an automated way. Uh, you know, if you had a project that had several hundred source files and you had, you know, varying different names and possibly different languages and you were trying to create one unified application in the end, it would be very difficult or almost impossible to do this from the command line or not impossible, but just uh, impossibly time consuming uh, to do this for the, from the command line. So you need an automated way to do that. And traditionally on Unix systems, the way that we've done that is, uh, with something called make files, which are just a set of instructions, uh, that, that tells the computer how to compile and, and link together, uh, different applications or different, uh, libraries and executables to make larger applications. Uh, the cross platform make comes in because this system can also generate files for, um, for example, Mac OS's Xcode or Windows Visual Studio projects, which allow you to, you know, have a graphical user interface and an integrated development environment to um, build and test software. Um, we're primarily just going to use it from the perspective of a of Unix command line. Of course, Mac OS is also a Unix machine, so you can just generate the make files on. Uh, directly on a Mac and use them that way if, if you don't want to use Xcode. So the first thing we're talking about is just how you would use CMake to build a larger project because this is a common thing that you need to do. You need to build software and of course when I say build what I'm talking about is compiling individual source code files and linking them together to make libraries or applications. So in the in the root of a project directory the simplest way you would run CMake is just to type CMake. Uh, the set of instructions would be set there in, in files called uh, that we'll see later called CMakeList.txt, and uh, you would just type this and it would generate the make files. Now, how this rarely works without setting certain environment variables um, the, or additional instructions to CMake, and some of the common ones are here, like for example. CMake install prefix is a is a you would set that to a value that is a, a path that tells it where you want to install the compiled code. Uh, by default, CMake builds static libraries. Uh, if you wanted to build shared libraries, you'd set the envir this environment variable to to on or true. Um, you can build debug or releases. So if you set this to debug, it would set the compiler flags automatically to um, have debug instructions. This is typically dash G on GCC or ICC compilers. You can change the C compiler if you wanted to use, uh, say an Intel compiler, you could set it to ICC versus uh, a possibly a GCC compiler. Um, you can set different compiler flags. You can, um, if you have certain dependencies that your project depends on, you can set this CMake prefix path to a path uh, and where it will look for dependencies. This is in addition to user local or the, you know, the kind of common, um, common locations. So, uh, there's many, many more of these. I mean, there's hundreds of environment variables that are by default and any project that you might, um, use would, would also have its own additional, uh, likely have its own additional variables as well. So here's an example of how you might use them. Um, you can, you can just set these uh, environment variables directly on the command line if you wanted to. In this case, we're adding an install prefix, or you could stick these in a bash script. So this might be an example of, of a, what a bash script might look like. Um, so you know, here's the first line is the shebang line to run bash, and then after that, we're setting um, multiple uh, variables, uh, changing the CX, the C++ compiler to ICPC, and etc. After you generate the make files, then you uh, can go ahead and build the project with make. 
often if you have a multi you know a multiprocessor machine you can use something like make dash j2 which would build it on two threads or two com two processors um, if the um, if the project has a test suite the next step would be to run make test or c test uh, cmake has a built-in test runner uh, so this would be uh, how you could run the test suite and the last step would be to install the actual libraries and header files uh, and executables into the you know the location that you must have uh, that you have specified. So let's look at an example here. Um, I've already downloaded uh, a library called HDF5. It stands for Hierarchical Data Format. It's a common random access data format set of, uh, that's built as a library and often linked against in applications. Uh, scientific applications often use this for uh, as a way to write to and store uh, large data. Okay, so I've already uh, downloaded it and I'm in the project directory here. And so if I list the project directory, you'll see a lot of files there, uh, including the cmake-less.txt file and some other instructions for cmake, and then a lot of other you know um, a lot of other things here. Uh, so it's often the, uh, as a best practice to keep your build directory clean, or to keep your source code directory clean, to build from a, a special directory. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a directory called build and go ahead and move into that directory. Uh, so now the, uh, the source code is at one directory above us in the, in the, in the structure, in the file structure here. Um, so now I can go ahead and, and uh, specify a few commands and I'm gonna, I'm gonna specify a few extra ones uh, so that this just builds a little faster than it would if I use the default. So I'm going to run CMake dash. Uh, I'm going to turn the shared libraries off. The the default in this has been set by the developers of this to be on. I'm going to turn that off. So I'm going to turn off. Um, also, there's. I'm going to turn off building all C++ lives. That should be HDF5. And then I'm going to uh, set the install prefix to my home directory workspace.hdf file. And now I have to put the path to the source code. In that case, it's dot dot, or it's one directory above us. So now it's configuring. This means it's actually going to generate the make files. Looks like uh, it's telling me a manually specified variable was not used in this project. So uh, I must have misspelled something or gotten the wrong name there. So one thing I could do is there is a sort of interactive uh, CMake that's called CCMake, and it should give me an idea of what the variable name actually is if I look at it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run CCMake real quick, and the it's a HDF5 build C++ lib. So I think I accidentally put a put an X there, I mean an extra S. So if I just run this command again, removing that extra S. going to reconfigure it reused some of the information from before so it didn't take as long to run um, but now I'll go ahead and type make in this case I'll use two threads okay so the project's done building I can type make test to test the project so now it's running the test suite uh, you can see in this case there are actually 1,792 tests. Um, we're not going to wait on all of those to build. So I'll just go ahead and cancel that. But then the last step would be to write uh, make make install, and this would install into uh, into the location that we specified. And I'll go ahead and cancel that. Uh, it's not important. So returning to our slides. Uh, just a couple other tips, uh, you know, with further configuration than what we showed here, you could also export to Apple Xcode or Microsoft Visual Studio projects. 
Um, you saw briefly that I used the interactive CC make just to look for the environment variables that I needed. Uh, and it's important to always create a, a separate build directory within the source for to, to keep the source code clean. So had we not done that, uh, all the object files would have sort of cluttered up the source code and, it, and it's very difficult to, you know, bring the source code back to its clean state. And if you build a, if you create a separate build directory, it's very easy. All you have to do is uh, remove that build directory and you're right back where you started, uh, freeing up your hard drive of space from all the object files that were created and other things. So if you would like to create your own CMake projects uh, or CMake, uh, you know, your own applications using CMake, uh, here's just a couple of uh, real simple examples of what you would do. So if you have a directory structure that looks like this, my project, in the root of that, you'd always have a CMake list file. It's typical to then include all your source code in a file called source and, uh, I mean, a folder called source. Um, and another folder or directory called tests, where you may have some tests, and each of these would then have their own CMake list as well. The CMake list is where you put the instructions for building uh, for building the application. So uh, in this case, in the, in the top level directory, you'd have to 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 include the subdirectories, and you just use these commands: add subdirectory that leads to uh, test and and source. Um, some common commands that you'd use, were, you know, for example, if you wanted to create a compiled library, um, you'd use the command add library, and the first argument to that command is the name of the library that you want to create, um, and then the the second arguments or additional arguments afterwards uh, would be all the source files that are going to go into creating that library. Uh, if you wanted to create an, an executable um, as opposed to a library. Then it's sort of same same thing. You'd say add executable, give the executable a name, followed by the source files uh, for that executable. Well, when during the build process, uh, you know if you have some header files that located in a special directory, uh, then you you need to include this. You know target include directories. The target would be either an executable or a library. So the name of the library or executable, and then the path to the header files after that. And then, you know, additionally, um, typically when you're creating a library or executable, you're linking it against possibly other libraries or executables. And in this case, uh, then you'd use the target link libraries command to uh, basically you'd, you'd name the, the library or executable. Again, this would be defined in add library, add executable, and then you'd add the names of the libraries that you want to link against those. So let's um, look at a simple example here. So here we have a, a simple example. This example, uh, I have a couple of C++ files, uh, one of them called add. Uh, so it simply just takes two arguments and returns the addition of those arguments. Additionally, I have a header file associated with that. Um, you can see it there. It just uh, you know lists the constructor or the the, the function definition. Uh, additionally, there's a, a, a another file called subtract, which you know just takes this two arguments and returns the uh, subtraction of the two arguments. And what I want to do is I want to I want to take add and subtract and I want to compile them into a library uh, that we'll call math. Okay. Uh, and so you know the way you would do this on the command line would be you'd first have to compile those those two um, commands. So you can say uh, uh, G plus plus for you know to call the C plus plus compiler. Uh, in this case, we'll say compile only, add.cc. Uh, and if we look now, you see add.o. This is the object file that was created when the compiler ran on add.cc. So we need to do the same thing for subtract. And now you see subtract.o is there. Okay. And so now what we want to do is we want to take those object files add and subtract and create a library that we'll call math. So we're going to run G++ 
we want it to be a shared library. Uh, the, uh, the files will be all files with the .o file extension, the, the object files. Um, and then the name of this guy we'll, we'll call libmath.so. Uh, so now you see the shared library libmath.so is there. So then finally what we'll, we'll do is if we have a main function here, uh, the main function just includes the headers files, uh, add and subtract, uh, and what it's going to do is just print out, you know, 2 plus 2 equals, and it's going to call the add function on 2 plus 2. Uh, likewise, it's going to say 5 minus 3, and it's going to call uh, the subtract function on with 5 and 3 as arguments, which of course should return 2. Uh, and so if we, what we want to do now is we want to compile this um, main into an executable and link against that library. So what we'll do is say G++, um, we'll just main.cc, we want to link against the math library and we have to tell it where that library is uh, and it's in the, in the current directory here. And so there uh, it should produce an executable called a.out, that's the default. Um, if we try to run this, um, you'll see that it can't find the, the shared object path. Uh, that's so on a Unix machine to add something to the uh, to the path, the runtime path, uh, where things will look for uh, shared. So we, we would use uh, ld. We would use ld uh, library path. Uh, we're going to set that to the current directory. Uh, and then append, you know, the, the, the existing value of the variable. And so now then if we run it, um, it knows where to look for that library, libmath.so, in the current directory, and, and you see we get the result that we'd expect. Okay. So that was a lot of steps. Um, we can simplify this and, and let CMake do the work for us. Um, Let's uh, go ahead and remove those object files, uh, as well as the uh, the shared object file. So now we're back to the home directory as it was before, and we have this file cmakelist.txt. So if we look at what's in there, um, I just went ahead and put uh, the first line is just something that all CMake files need to tell it what feature set you're going to use. In this case, you know, a feature set. Uh, the minimum version would be 2.8, which was several years ago. So um, we're not going to use any of the really advanced features of CMake at this point. So we, the first thing we're going to do is just give it the, our project a name. Um, in this case, like we could give it the name My Math and tell it that it's a C++ project. And the first thing we want to do is add that library, uh, math.so. So we'll add the library, give it a name. We'll call it Math. Uh, that's the first argument, so that's the name of our library. And then the files uh, that we want to include in this library will be um, add.cc and subtract.cc. Um, so then we want to tell it to look for the header files. So uh, this, in this case, target include uh, directories will be uh, the target we're, we're looking for here is math. Uh, it will, we'll just use public uh, as a second argument. You can look up in the documentation what that means. Uh, but then we want to set that to the CMake source directory. So the CMake source directory is an automatic variable set by CMake that is the path to the, the very root CMake list file. So that's in the same location as our header files in this case. So, um, so we have that. Uh, in this, so then what we, what we can do that will create our shared uh, our library math dot uh, you know the, the the shared library or in this case uh, it, the default is static, but we can change that on the command line. So then what we'll do is we want to uh, add an executable. 
And just to be consistent with before, you normally wouldn't do this, but we'll give it the name a dot out. Um, and the file of the, the executable is main.cc. Uh, we'll, you can leave the, the same uh, include directories here if you'd like. A dot out includes that. But in this case, we also want to link this executable against um, the library we created above. So in this case, uh, target link libraries. And what we're going to do is we want to link a dot out to math. Uh, and this should uh, be all what we need for this. And so then if we go here, we're going to create a build directory, move into that build directory. And this time we'll just run CMake with the argument uh, build shared libs equals on and the path to um, the CMake list file, which is one above us in this point. And then that should have generated our make files. We can just type make. Um, and what you see uh, is automatically uh, live.so was created. That's our library. And a.out is there. And of course, it runs without any issues. So uh, the object files and all that were created. Uh, the, they can be found in. Um, like CMake files, and there should be a directory, uh, like for example, the math directory. If we list that, then you see that there's a file add.cc.o. Uh, there should also be one subtract.cc.o. Uh, and, and so those are the object files. Those are automatically created, uh, you know, in, in our, um, in, in the path of, of, of running this command, process of running this command. So returning to the slides, um, you know, you can do a lot of other things. You can create, you know, um, you can do a lot of other things. You can create internal CMake variables with set. Uh, you can do conditional logic in your CMake. So, you know, for example, uh, you know, if you had some option uh, that's a, a some variable, my Boolean variable, and you set it to on, then you could, if it's if it's on or true, you could do something. If it's not or false, you could do something else um, and all that. Uh, you know, there are there's a lot of documentation for CMake. Uh, the best way I've found to learn CMake, and it's, it's the reason I didn't go into really extensive discussion of all the possible ways to create the files here, is to just use existing projects. So look at what other developers have done, and this is the best way uh, to learn how to use CMake.